Um, we are now joined by, by our dear friend and colleague, Rachel Maddow, by phone. Rachel, he said this, quote, I need to unite my party. The best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future all merit a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That is the best way to unite our nation. Your thoughts? Yeah, first of all, I'm sorry that I'm not there with all of you in person. I am homesick um, and trying hard not to get anybody else sick. But um, wow, I mean, I think it should also just be said like, this is one of those speeches that is going to go down in history, um, not just as a great Joe Biden speech, but as a great moment in the American presidency. I mean, you know, that uh, the quote that you just described, of course, that nothing should stand in the way of saving our democracy, uh, including personal ambition, but also, you know, the way he started talking about, you know, honesty, decency, respect, does character in public life still matter? Um, it's this is this is a timeless speech about a very specific moment, both where he came to the presidency from talking about what, frankly, the former president left him the worst pandemic in a century, the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War, all simultaneously. That's what he walked into. But now his feeling that his personal ambition his belief that he his his record does warrant a second term and he wants it and you hear that in his ambition even talking about what he plans to do these next 6 months that that itself is can't be bigger than the, the the needs of the nation and the needs of the nation to stay with this form of government what he called one of the greatest ideas in the history of the world it's a, an elegant speech um at a emotional and very moving moment for this president and i think sort of timelessly for the presidency this this is um, sort of a tentpole in terms of what patriotism and selfless service looks like. And I'm sure this couldn't have been easy for him, but it was, uh, it was beautifully done. And these are one of those lines um, in the chapter about the speech in the book about this president. I think this is one of the, 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 the lines that will be pulled out, Rachel. Kings and dictators do not rule, the people do. The great thing about America is here, kings and dictators do not rule, people do. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. You just have to keep faith. Keep the faith and remember who we are. We're the United States of America, and there is simply nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. We do it together. So let's act together, preserve our democracy. The president there, Rachel, sort of speaking right to one of the tools, as you know better than anyone, of the autocrat to make people feel that they have no agency, to make people feel despair, that an end to democracy or an end to our norms is inevitable. The president there, I think, throwing down, throwing down a marker for the American people, for the rest of us, to, um, to you know, keep the republic. Yes. And, you know, I think, Nicole, what he's also done here is he's he's positing a view of the presidency, which is just directly opposite to the idea of authoritarianism, which is opposite to the idea of autocracy. How, how does he start the speech? He talks about being in the Oval Office, talking about the portraits of presidents past who surround him. And he says, I revere this office but I love this country more. I revere this office, but I love this country more. What the autocrat loves is the office. And then the country must be supplicant to the ruler, right? That the most important thing about a country is who's in charge and everything else has to fall in line behind that ruler or they're disloyal and they need to be seen as an enemy and cast out. Instead, Biden is saying here, the role of the presidency is to serve this idea of the nation. The role of a president is to make sure the country is protected, not for the country to serve the president. And that is, I mean, it's a, it's an, I think it's true. I think it's the basic idea of the presidency. It's why the president and the whole executive branch has co-equal branches in our government that are designed to keep the country on track if any one of those branches goes off the rails. But it's also just the opposite idea 
to what his opponent is offering in in this election. I mean, J.D. Vance, the running mate of Donald Trump, said in his acceptance speech that America, America is not an idea. <laughs> well, no, it is. Uh, the idea of it is that we are a democracy. We're of, by, and for the people, and that the president is not a king, and that we're all bound by the same rule of law. And um, there's no I alone can fix it in the vision of the United States that Joe Biden talked about tonight and that he's ascribing to the founders and that I think most Americans, um, I think most Americans would agree with him there. And Rachel, we know you're sick. We want to let you get back to your chicken soup, but we're so happy to have you with <laughs> us. Let me just read you one more piece that gets at what, what I think you talk about so often, and that is this moment, this, everything that makes it different. Um, the president saying this, I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point, one of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now determine our fate, the fate of the nation and the world for decades to come. America is going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide. Do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice and democracy? Yeah. And then he finished that by saying, does character and public life still matter? I mean, he knows exactly where we are. His voice may be faltering. His delivery may not be as strong as we remember it. Even at the beginning of this term, the presidency takes a toll and he's the oldest man to ever have the job. And he had this job at the time of incredible challenges. Um, but his vision is clear. And when he talks about the choice that we've got, I mean, there there really is there there really is without hyperbole a choice here, not just between candidates, but between the American system of government or something new. And that's what he's talking about. And, you know, I think that if he were up against a Mitt Romney style Republican or even a Marco Rubio style Republican, Joe Biden would not have left office because I think that he would think, you know what? Yeah, there might be a risk because I'm old, but. I know that I've got the record to do this and I know that I've got, you know, a record to run on and I want to finish the job and I'm going to push through my critics and do it. But what he's saying here is that the contest that we're in is bigger than any one president, is bigger than any, you know, any moment in the hist personal history of Joe Biden. It's bigger than my biggest personal ambitions. The moment that we're in is about whether or not we continue as a republic. and. It's not a hyperbolic thing to say, given what he's up against and given the way his opponent tried to stay in office after he was voted out the last time. And it's just, um, I mean, we knew this was a very selfless thing that he did when he did it on Sunday with this paper statement. But I think this speech tonight um, goes down in the annals of American history um, as a, a, clarion, a, a clarion moment. He's saying it's not about it's not about me. It's about whether or not we're going to stay the United States of America. And um, I just I'm very moved by this speech. Rachel Maddow, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please go get better because at this rate, there's going to be more history to cover um, together with you. Um, please feel better. Um, Thanks, my